when I ripped off my Acropovic exhaust muffler and replaced it with the GP S1 Pro, I wondered would it sound a bit naff? Or would I lose some power? Or even worse, would I end up with burnt valves? I was a little bit nervous to be honest, so I'm going to cover some of the questions that I asked myself when I was in the process of buying this particular GP S1 Race Pro exhaust tip. And maybe these questions you've been asking yourself as well. Specifically, I'm going to cover power, burnt valves, and what it sounds like once installed and how that works on street versus on a race day on track. So my first question was about power. How does the GP S1 Race Pro affect the performance of your bike? Interestingly enough, and unfortunately maybe, there's no increase in power. But I wasn't actually expecting that. End of the day, I didn't install it for power. There were other reasons I installed it, and part of that was how it locked. And also I didn't remove the catalytic converter, and I didn't remove the flapper valve. And I did that for intentional reason, which I'll talk about later. But interestingly enough, it doesn't decrease the power of the motorcycle either. What I found when I went to a track day is that the times that I'd been sitting with my previous OEM Acropophic exhaust was actually the exact same times that I set with the GP S1. So the great news was that it didn't affect power at all. I have to make a slight disclaimer because I haven't actually dynoed this exhaust tip, the GP S1. I haven't done any scientific proof that I can give you to say that it's faster or slower with this particular change in the exhaust. But what I can say is that it's not changed to a second my lap times around my local circuit. The next question I had, especially racing on the track, was is there a possibility that I could get burnt valves from this change to my exhaust system? And there are some people that say because the effect on hot gases which are being drawn out, being reversed with cold air being drawn in because of the exhaust change, this combination could actually cause your valves to become burnt. Others actually say that it's not actually true because it's such a small change to the exhaust because you haven't removed the catalytic converter, you haven't removed the flapper valve, you haven't changed the headers which are a really important part of the equation. So it's such a small change. A lot of people say you haven't got an issue with burnt valves or at least it's extremely slim that it will occur. So based on that information I decided to keep both the catalytic converter and the flapper valve installed to make sure that it didn't adjust anything to do with the pressure waves or the exhaust scavenging or anything that could change the dynamics of how my existing exhaust worked. Suffice to say, exhaust design is a science. It's not a case of just slapping some pipes together, welding them up and throwing on a muffler. There are some clever guys and girls out there designing these exhaust systems to ensure that certain events within the exhaust occur at a certain time. I mean, these designers are working with waves that are travelling at the speed of sound. That's pretty impressive. And they are designing the length of the pipe, the diameter of the pipe, the curvature of the pipe, and all the cross sections of the pipe to ensure that everything in that pipe arrives at the right destination, e.g. the exhaust port, at the right time. And then on top of that, there's the ECU, the O2 sensor, and the flapper valve to make all the magic happen. Things such as back pressure, gas velocity, and also the positive and negative pressure waves, valve overlap timing, and exhaust scavenging, and the list goes on. Once we turn that key, there's some serious action happening in our exhaust. In the near future, I'm planning to install a quick shifter on my 9T, and to do that, I'm gonna to need to install an ECU piggyback module. A part of that module is a way of recalibrating or rebalancing the air fuel mixture based on the O2 sensor. So the module I'm gonna buy is the Rapid Bike Evo module, and this will easily read off the O2 sensor and work out how much the actual O2 reading is and rebalance the intake of the air and the output of the fuel. And this in turn will ensure that I won't get any burnt valves. So even before I bought the GPS-1, I actually wondered would it sound better than the OEM Acropovic silencer that I've currently got extolled as a part of my exhaust system. This is rather subjective really, but in my opinion, it depends where you're riding. It's definitely not something that I'd use on public roads. This is my frank opinion, but I've got a different opinion when it comes to on track. At the end of the day, a GPS-1 on a BMW R9T is actually obnoxiously loud and, dare I say, embarrassing on public roads. It really is. It's just way too loud. It's ridiculous. And as much as I like a really good sounding exhaust, this exhaust, the sound is so loud it just bounces off every stationary object in the street and reverberates back in towards you and out towards all the people that are walking past. 
But I've got a different opinion when it comes to on track. And the reason I have a difference of opinion between using this particular exhaust tip on street versus using it on track is because the environment is completely different. On track the sound completely changes compared to on street. There's nothing really worth mentioning for the sound to reverberate off and it doesn't adversely affect the performance so it's actually a really good on track exhaust change. If you lay your bike down on the left hand side you're not going to destroy 1500 US dollars worth of exhaust uh, silencer what you'll probably stuff up only is the exhaust tip which is 125 US dollars still hurts but it's not as bad as 1500 the last thing is aesthetics and I think aesthetically this exhaust tip actually adds to the bike and the reason I think that even though I love the OEM Acropovic uh, silencer I thought it was a beautiful silencer the problem is, is it covered up a really beautiful back wheel and I actually also love the spoke wheels even though they're not ideal for racing because I've friggin heavy but they actually look great in my opinion so yeah if you do the occasional track day it could be worth getting the GPS one to take along with you slap it on and take off your uh, existing silencer so there's one less thing to get broken if in the unlikely and very unfortunate case that you happen to drop your bike otherwise for on street I'd recommend sticking with your Acropovic or change to an SC project a unit garage or a Remus or one of my favorites which is the Boss double under seat exhaust system if you enjoyed this video then please click the like button down below and if you like subscribe if you're thinking of buying clip-ons make sure you watch this video right here